Japan is full of history, both factual and mythological, and we want to share these stories with you. I will be jumping around the history of Japan to find stories both interesting and fantastical. I'm your host, Thomas. And I'm your co host, Heather. We've both lived in Japan now for over two years and have learned so many interesting tales to tell. We'll also be reading a Japanese song or poem for you in Japanese, and we'll discuss the poet and meaning behind these songs. And with that out the way, Heather, you ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's go. Hello, everyone. Just a couple things before we start the episode. We want to sincerely apologize for our absence last week. The best laid plans often go astray. Both Thomas and I were on holiday last week, although in separate places in the world. And due to a few unexpected events, we weren't able to upload the podcast. However, I was able to record the following podcast in Tokyo. One more thing. I wasn't able to find the Japanese translation for Yasumi Roen in the last episode. So, there's a new poem this week, and I will keep on looking. We'll be back recording together next week. Okay, on to the episode. You sure you don't want to say anything? Welcome to the Japan Archives, a podcast delving into bite sized pieces of Japanese history and mythology. I'm your co host, Heather. We've had to switch things just a little bit. Thomas will be recording his superstitions podcast next week due to a slight medical emergency. He's okay, don't worry. I'm outside today for our ghost story. In the dark in Tokyo. I hope you can hear the cicadas in the background. It's a warm evening, and sometimes you also might hear some traffic going by. We are. Where are we at?、Um, oh, so we're in、uh, Megadoku, which is to the, the western part of Tokyo, right? It's almost the center. Oh, so it's almost the center. I don't know if you can hear beside me is the professor. So, you might hear an occasional laugh or a snort. I hope this picks up his voice, but it might not. Thank you, Professor.、Mm -hmm. Ghost stories are usually told in summer in Japan. Because you shiver in fright, you'll get just a little bit cooler, which is really helpful because the temperature sometimes in the evenings can be around 80 degrees Fahrenheit or around mid 20 Celsius. Is that right? I got a nod for confirmation. Our ghost story today comes from the professor. So I asked him, as well as another friend in Tokyo, some stories they liked. I want to share my friend's story another time. I want to share it with Thomas, so we'll save that one for later. This tale is about the n o p e d a b o or the faceless ghost. They look human in form, but have no facial features. They can also change into other forms, but still have no face. A quick note before I start telling the story、uh, you'll hear a word called anata.、Uh, basically, it's the Japanese,、um, Japanese word for like deer or honey. It's usually said from、um, women to men. Okay, on to the story. There was once a fisherman who lived near the palace of the emperor. Now, this fisherman was rather lazy and decided that one day, Instead of going to his usual spots, he would fish in the koi pond near the emperor's palace. His wife, panicked at the thought, said, Anata, you should not go. The pond belongs to the emperor and is sacred. There's also a graveyard nearby. Please, it's too dangerous. Don't go. However, the fisherman just grunted <coughs> and left. He walked along the path, pole in hand. A farmer tending his land noticed him and his pole and the direction. His eyes widened and he began to yell, What? Are you going to the sacred pond to fish? No, don't go. But the fisherman just grunted、yeah. and continued on his way. When he reached the pond, he baited his pole and started to cast. To his surprise, a beautiful woman 
seemed to suddenly appear at his side. Oh, dear sir, please don't fish here. You must not fish here. It's sacred land. The fisherman, intent on following through with his casting, did not reply back. He reached back, and just before his line touched the water, the woman jumped in front of him and wiped away her face. The fisherman jumped in fright and began to run, leaving behind his pole. He didn't stop running. He dashed past the farmer and didn't stop until he reached his home. Anata, oh Anata, I told you, you shouldn't have gone. Oh, why did you go? You fished where you should not go. Oh, now you have to pay for your deeds. And with that, his wife stood and wiped away her face. That's the end of our story for today and on to our poem. So I picked a poem. It's a summertime poem. It's another haiku. It's from Maso Okoshiki. He was born October 14th, 1867 and is considered one of the great haiku masters. Active during the Meiji period, he was instrumental in the development of modern haiku. Natsu no suki, chuochin oki, chimatta kana. The English translation, and I got this from a website, which I will put in the show notes. The summer moon, there are a lot of paper lanterns on the street. I also asked the professor for a translation, and this is what he gave me. The summer moon, there are many lights on the lively street. And it is summertime in Tokyo. This is the end of the Oban holiday period. There has been some Oban festivals and some matsuris, and there are lots of places that do have paper lanterns, but right now the most of the lanterns on the street are electric, but there are still some places that do have some paper lanterns, and it's quite beautiful. That's going to do it for me today. I hope that you're having a wonderful summer, and I hope that next week you will enjoy Thomas's Superstitions podcast. See you guys later. Bye. If you enjoy the Japan archives and have an interest in Japanese history and mythology, please be sure to check out our growing database over at historyofjapan.co.uk. We continue to add more to it every week, and you can find the show notes for every episode up on the website too. It's a large undertaking, so please be patient while we try to make a database which all Japanese history lovers can find useful. You can find us over on Twitter at A History of Japan. And if you're on Instagram, you can find us there at nexus underscore travels. That's N-E-X-U-S underscore travels. We also have a Facebook page, which you can find at Japan Archives. All of our social media is different. Also, if you're interested in little slices of life in Japan, be sure to check out my website over at heatheroveryonder.com. Thank you for tuning in today. We hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you have any suggestions for future episodes, or have anything you'd love to hear about, head on over to historyofjapan.co.uk and send us a message. If you enjoyed the show, please be sure to give us a rating and review over on iTunes. Right now, it's the best place to do so, and it helps us get the word out about this show. Thanks again for listening, guys. Until next time, bye. Matane.